A very good morning to you and welcome to St. Lawrence Jury for our weekly Holy Communion service. We start by praying together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Almighty God, who in Christ makest all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of thy grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known thy heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The reading is taken from Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides, and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept, and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll and look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the centre of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is that according to St. John chapter 1, starting to read at the 43rd verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. <clears throat> the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. 
Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Here ends the Gospel. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Throughout both of these two readings, we hear some of the titles that Jesus is given or ascribes to himself. In the Gospel reading, there is reference to him being the son of God, being a rabbi, being the king of Israel, uh, and the son of man, another title that crops up in the Gospels. This morning I wanted also to pick up from the book of Revelation the title that is given to Jesus in that part of our scriptures, namely, the Lamb of God. It's an amazing image. <clears throat> Jesus is the Lamb of God. We might, if we're musical, particularly send our minds to that passage in Handel's Messiah, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Now in the Revelation passage, I encourage you don't get too lost in the imagery, which is quite complex, but just focus for a moment on the title, The Lamb of God. You are worthy, St John the Divine writes, because... With your blood, you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. During this epiphany season, we think a lot about the fact that Christ's coming and his death and resurrection opened up the kingdom of heaven, not just to those of the Jewish faith into which he was born, but to all people across the world. And the image of the lamb takes us back to the Old Testament where the lamb was sacrificed as an atonement. The, in the temple, a lamb was killed and offered to God as a way of atoning for the sins of the people. And so in the book of Revelation, the image of the lamb is of the one who atones, the one whose blood has been spilt, that he might purchase from God salvation for each and every one of us, persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. He was slain and he purchased our salvation. But at the very end of that passage, there is a different question. Uh, it's a silent uh, question, but it's answered. The silent question is, why? And the answer is, we have made, uh, sorry, you have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth forever. As we celebrate at this table the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, our response is that we should be those who seek in every part of our lives to serve God and his Son Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb. Amen. And so we join together in the creed, saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, 
whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. Let us pray to the Father, who, through the Son, has opened for us the way to heaven. Father God, may your church be always alert in your service, ready to answer new calls for the coming of the kingdom. Lift up our hearts to adore the Lamb who was slain for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Cast out the distrust that separates people of different cultures and backgrounds. Draw all to be one, to be of one mind, open to the heavenly message that Christ has brought to the world. Lord, in your mercy, be present among our families, our friends, our colleagues, and if any are called to a particular service in your purpose, give them ears to hear and wills to follow you. Lord, in your mercy, have mercy on the aged, whose powers are failing and whose eyes grow dim. Give them your strength to replace their own and support all little children who are perplexed by responsibilities beyond their years. Lord, in your mercy. And so, as followers of Christ, called to his service, we pray in his name. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, saying with me, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, 
that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. And now we give thee thanks because in the incarnation of the word a new light has dawned upon the world that all the nations may be brought out of darkness to see the radiance of thy glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen.
as our Saviour Christ hath commanded us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God of glory, as thou dost nourish us with thy word, who is the bread of life, fill us with thy Holy Spirit, that through us the light of thy glory may shine in all the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.